There had not been a time in recent memory when any had challenged the collective might of the Commonwealth. But as conflict engulfed the world, our enemies were foolish enough to bring aggression to our coastline. And as Japanese bombs fell on our shores, the Commonwealth was already in motion to defend her people. And when we strike back, we shall do so as united front, with allies by our side. And together, we shall find victory! Hi guys, Gaming Bear here. Right, the next video is part of the series of Heart of Iron. In the background you can see I'm just about to start a new series because there's been an update at one point, patch 1.4.2, which has come in with some seriously big updates. Lots of AI changes, the way they do wars, the way they do trade, and the way they manage uh, the, the organisation of uh, producing units and producing... Uh, equipment so and how they develop develop with battles and work with allies so you know just a few little changes minor tweaks oh and as well as how they yeah they they deal with their naval battles and naval situations and controlling the sea ways so yeah not just the the, the sea the na the land the air well everything so in in a way they've they've looked at different aspects of, of everything by the look of this it seems like a huge patch Lots of lots of bug fixes, basically making the AI smarter and more realistic over what it's been. Right, so the end of uh, the episode. This is a later version that I'm playing. So at the end of that episode, it was May 1937, so I believe, and we just captured all of the Dutch East Indies, ready to uh, to start heading out and well, just solidifying our holdings, ready for the uh, for the next stage. So that's where we were at that episode. So I think that was quite a good way to fit one episode to solidify everything around about the Japanese main mainland, pushing in and taking all of the Dutch East Indies in the the first quarter of or the the, the end of uh, 2006, uh, 2006, 1936, and uh, the first quarter of 1937. So thank you for watching. It, there's a lot more to come, and yes, it's uh, it's not until 1938. It goes on until about 1940. These uh, series of episodes, and then after that, we switch over to the new up updated system, which I'm literally just well, which I'm going to be starting with this episode you see before me. So you're you're going to be working through the episodes I've recorded, and you will be coming back to this point at some point in the very near future. So. And I will be playing this new game with uh, these new updates. So yeah, look forward to that as well. I certainly am. I can't wait to uh, to get it started. So yes, as with those things, I've recorded the uh, the starting episode earlier. And as of well, World of Warships, we have oh, it's just updating the components, ninety percent done. So I have I've got the World of Warships reviews to do as well. So yeah, I've got all of all of the here yeah, the British battleships, apart from the War Spot, which I love. And I've already done reviews on, and but I may include in. I don't know. See how it goes. So yes, that's uh, this. Just I'm just waffling. See you soon. I'm just excited. Too many games. Yay! <laughs> I'm just loving it, and to be able to bring you all of this, uh, this all of this work, all of that I'm doing, and it it frees it up. It allows me to have the time to to upload and produce and get things together. It means I can actually just pull it all together for you guys, and it's just brilliant. I've got. To, chain different trains of thought and different things going on at the same time and it's just brilliant just so many games you get get you get bored with one game well not bored you get uh you stop thinking you're uh, not stop thinking but you you're there you, you need a break from the game and so you just oh i'll play that instead and so I'm, I'm hopping from one game to one great game to another and i'm just it's just absolutely gorgeous it's so lovely and oh i'm just i'm just enthused i love it so thank you for watching there oh, are so many games just not enough time oh dear what a problem to have yeah <laughs> i hate my life certain aspects but gaming no definitely not so uh see you soon bye guys see ya okay sadly with that crash we lost the um the ability to go back to that uh, that reset and ha had to redo it a little bit 
refought the uh, the battles in the Pacific, pulled back slightly, didn't push in, got the whole force together rather than splitting the force, and managed to defeat the uh, the Americans in Midway. Then pushed in, landed in the the toe of of India near um, near the island, and then fought our way back from the other side, the Afghanistan side, into the back of the of the Raj, took it from behind, while we then swept through into into China, at the uh, so, so a, tw a twin pronged attack, pushing in from two different directions, taking China and the Raj at the same time. I know. Well, what it basically was was holding holding China, pushing into the Raj having taken the uh, the Raj, then sweeping through, using those forces, slamming them back around the other way into uh, into China while, while they were being uh, pinned in place from the other force as it was more difficult to get in through the, uh, the Nepalese mountains. So we just used those to hold them in place, pin them in place, swung through the, the Siamese area, in through the, uh, the, and the, the French zone and into China and boom, that was it. China was gone and then it's now as you can see with the uh, the 71% we're just sending the troops in attacking into the Philippines take the Philippines first then it was at that stage moving down towards Australia and that's where the games are at the moment I have I'm holding the central Pacific against the Americans building up uh, the infrastructure building up uh, more production capacity and deciding what to do next, considering going up in towards um, towards Russia or in towards America. I was just going to relook at the uh, the details, but then as it's all changed, I'm thinking I may as well get on with the uh, the, the new game. So that's what we're going to do from now on. Uh, the the next episode is going to be the uh, the new episode with the new update. So thank you guys. I I may well put put some some of the gameplay up. But I want to get into that uh, those the, the the new way of doing things. So um, yeah, and I will bring you that with the updates very very soon. So thank you guys, and well, see you soon. Bye. In tandem, I will be doing a new series because basically this this new look at uh, Japan is going to be just a whole new. Well, it, it's the same country, but everything's updated. And well, it's it is it's these new patches. Oh, th things like the um, uh, radar used to be a bit bit pants. That's been enhanced at level one. The anti-air has gone from thirty percent down to fifteen percent, and little tweaks like that 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 have changed the gameplay to make it more realistic. So I'll be bringing you so those. All those little changes all add up, plus the other big sort of changes and other changes in the background, which I'll get more information on over time for you. So thank you guys. I'm going to carry on with this. So I've got the the videos going up in the background. I've got uh, well, I'd had issues with my internet, as you probably know, and my eyesight. So I've got this. It's not a gimmick. It is real. And so yes, I've got two to three years of uploads which I wasn't able to do because my bandwidth was so bad so I've got uh, I don't know well I was working out I was looking at the, the hard drives I had somewhere between of, of what I've uploaded and in total I've got up between 30 and 40 terabytes of data and of that I'm not sure how much I, I need to go through and see what I have got put up and what I haven't I've got so I've got archives and things to go through. So say there's probably just just an off the top figure of 10 terabytes of data that I haven't even uploaded to YouTube or haven't put on over the past two to three years of going places and doing things and playing games and all the rest of it and reviews of ships and tanks and planes. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I sort of didn't. There wasn't the time for the planes and. Um, so yes, back to um, and reviews of equipment and health supplements and things that people did. So I apologise for those who were waiting for those. They will be coming. And now I have the internet sorted out. Those will be coming along. So I'm play at the moment, I'm playing catch-up. So you've seen more recently. And it's because I've had so much to do. I've been trying to play catch-up. I've had uh, medical issues which have 
left me more blind than normal. Um, yeah, I've basically got this. This is to stop the image. I've got detached retina, and so I've got a superimposed. I was blind, got detached retina, so I've got a weird image from this eye over two thirds of this eye. Having the patch on makes it less intense. I've still got the image over two thirds of my vision, but so that's that's the underlying thing. Apart from the mobility, you've been disabled as well. So yeah, it's it's a it's a bit of a bit of an interesting time, but you've got to do what you can do. So yes, I'm going to carry on with the uh, the games, carry on doing the reviews and getting around when I can and doing what I can. Me, Ted, you know, we'll do what we do what we can. We'll get around and keep doing it. So keep having fun. I will keep bringing you the updates, giving you the information. And we'll see you soon. See, that's a little bit about what's coming on. And that's why this is disjointed. Put in the comments what you think. And it'll be getting back to longer episodes. And now I can actually upload them. Which is brilliant. Really, re after... Ah, oh, I was promised it two years ago. November... Um, two years ago. Oh, well, no, I'm... I'm I'm in pain, I need painkillers. Uh, my head's gone. So yeah, two, 2000, November 2015 probably. November 2015 was when I was expecting this internet to be updated and it just came in the past couple of weeks. And then I had the accident, another accident and uh, so it's all been pear-shaped. So yeah, getting it back under control, coping with these things, with the, the mobility problems which have got worse and the vision problems which have gone worse. I was feeling a little bit down and all the things and the internet not being right and waiting for that to come in and then trying to get it all together so many balls to juggle and that that was why there was sort of the gap and uh, I will try and stay on top of things and I will always do my best for you guys so thank you so much for bearing with me you guys are brilliant and I I, I never meant to let you down and I'm always, I always will do my best because I, I love these games and I just love playing them and it, it just takes me away from my own worries, my own bits, my own things. So, uh, yeah, thank you, just thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get, uh, get this la last bits editing, edited <clears throat> together, which you're going to see, and then I've got more gameplay. Oh, and I've got that um, uh, in the background. Yeah, the World of Warships is almost. It's 87% ready for that, and I will try and bring you the the new British line, like I did when we got that uh, that ahead of time stuff on the uh, the British cruisers. I'm going to try and get in and uh, bring you all about the uh, the British battleships as well. So thank you guys, you're just brilliant. You uh, the 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 support you guys give really really helps. You guys are just wonderful, and thank you, just thank you. That's it. Cheers, guys. Oh yeah, yeah. And I've still got the, the ongoing thing with YouTube. The part two to three years of doing this, I still haven't had a penny from YouTube. They're still not sorting out my code. The any money that has gone through from advertising has just—I I haven't got a penny. I haven't had anything for two and a half years of work. So every place I go, I fund myself. So the equipment, the hard drives, the computers, the additional lighting, the sound equipment, the cameras, the lenses, the everything else, you know, too many things to, to mention. All of that I'm funding out of my, uh, my, my money, my disability. And um, so sometimes I haven't always got the money to do it. So that's to let you know why they're, I'd forgotten about that side. Yeah, I've never had a penny from YouTube in all the time I've been doing this. So some people who say, "Oh, you do it about the money," it isn't. I don't do it for the money because I don't get get I don't get any money. So uh, I do it because I love it. Yeah, that's a really big thing. You guys are worth it. So thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye. Right, guys, we're ready to rock and roll. So the new episode, well, it's uh, Japan. We're going in doing doing it large. Now, what we are actually planning. Uh, you can see you've got a couple of uh, different sections set up. Frontline home, second line home. Basically, three separate forces here. Frontline powering its way through. Made up of heavy units. Hard punching tanks. Breakthrough 71. Then we have these follow-on units. Very, very fast. 9 kmh speed. Breaking straight through the, the enemy. 
45 breakthrough, good defense, good maneuver, straight through the enemy. And that's what, that's the, the front line there, or that's the, uh, the breakthrough unit. Then we have the front line, which is made up of cavalry going in. The terrain is causing a problem. Normally it's uh, 6.4 kilometers an hour, but because of the terrain and it's January, it's only 4.1. But 4.1 is still 0.1 faster than their infantry can move. So uh, that's a f relatively fast moving unit in the terrain. So they're moving in, they'll be slamming through the, uh, the mountains, coming through here, encircling the troops around Beijing, while these forces who are behind in this second line, who are moving in from these islands straight up to, uh, to form the third line, or the second line, the third force, is these units, they don't have so much equipment at the moment, but as the equipment is uh, being enhanced, they will gain in power as we capture more of the Chinese territory and as we broaden the offensive line. Now that's the normal invasion we're doing and we're moving ships up to assist and I'll show you that in a bit. Now external assault forces you can see we've got cavalry plus uh, the marines going in but the important thing, each of these units, all of these 14 units, has one and a half weight. Now that's the important thing about invasion, is the weight of the unit. Doesn't matter what it can do, it's the weight itself. And because of them only having a one and a half weight, we can send in three lots of units into, or three sets, so six units, in at any one single time. Heading in, and which is why I've got so many invasion points, and assisting other units coming in, assisting with the invasion from different places. So if one fails or is being held up, the units following behind that have captured places can then be diverted through to assist or to land somewhere else to help tactically, depending on what happens. So that's, that's the reason for that. Then the second line abroad, these guys are going to be moving in. And if we have a look in... These guys are going to be going in, guarding the external ports and just defending the ports that we take over externally. Then we have this single line at the moment, not very uh, many guys, uh, but this will be going in, covering any territory we take over and this will be having lots of cavalry units in and those cavalry units are very good at putting down rebellions and suppress suppressing rebellions, which is what's called foreign suppression. And then we look at the recruitment side, these units going in, you can see the, they've got the blue, they've been allocated to the foreign suppression. This unit, pink, is going to the second line abroad to hold the ports. These red units are going in to the, uh, the front line assault, and then plus these units and then these cavalry units are going into the uh, the main force attack and these secondary units are going into the the second line home defense so that's all kicking in the production and logistics at the moment it's showing we need 170 support equipment and 14,000 14 and a half thousand military yeah, well weapons so that's where we are at the moment. So to be able to fill those gaps of what we need, I'll show you the production of equipment. Now you see here we're short of um, 15 oil, two rubber, all the rest is in hand. Now, working through, we've got these units of subs and I'm getting all the production, well, apart from the one unit that was already in these these external or the uh, in the port system producing ships in the ports ready to, to be used what I'm doing is getting one line out of the way at a time and these will be ready on the 6th of January so uh, we're looking five days and th this will be done then the production will shift into the next unit so you can see we've got nine units here nine ports helping to produce here it goes to ten this will then be ready, it says uh, June 1936, but as soon as it gets all of this production, then this destroyer is going to be next finished and ready to rock and roll. Then all of that production, you can see 11 units go into this third, so you can see the pattern. 
following down, knocking all of these units out until we get further down. Then we get the uh, Soroyu class carrier, carrier 2, straight out of the way. And even at the moment, that's the, uh, well, it says 1943, but then with all this additional production, that'll be far faster. Then into a heavy cruiser and then into a battleship, which will give us the support to allow us to have do the invasions and moving the heavy frontline craft into the uh, the battle zones holding station and helping with the invasions and just pounding the coasts as our guys are going in so that's the um, the naval side then we're producing these normal equipment with a little bit of outdated equipment being built in the background it's outdated but it's going to go to the 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 rear echelon troops but for the same steel and the same amount of time you're getting 20 percent more weapons so as we're 14,000 short this is going to help just give us those extra few weapons that we need as time goes by then a few on support equipment and as we've got a lot of tungsten we can produce a lot of towed artillery these this will as we battle and take different uh, points the experience we gain as we update things will allow us to put towed artillery into the frontline units to allow to help us to punch through behind the, that we've got uh, light tanks boom they're going to be in so that's the the frontline troops all sorted to assist we, we then need the planes incoming first set of planes let's just click the oops we click those off and just leave ourselves with the planes which are in production so carrier naval bombers get these in to work on the carriers that we've got coming down the line to assist us in all situations close assault getting them in place to work from the airfields or they can work from the carriers whatever is the most practical way of doing it then carrier fighters as we don't have a great number on the carriers we're moving the carrier force up so they need air protection so that's number one then we get the close air support which have got a longer range and they cost slightly less to produce as it costs more for any um, carrier version of the planes so they're cheaper to produce slightly better and so we'll, we'll be producing them next but they're less versatile because they can't go on carriers then interwar fighters, then naval bombers, and then long-range uh, interwar bombers, which are good at ground target. They can attack ground targets, ships, and strategic targets as you work your way through. So that's all of the production that's happening. So you're sort of thinking, well, how how do you manage to do it? You've got uh, minus 15. So trade-wise, we're going to be trading with around 16 units of oil. So we'll be plus one, and going for Iran initially it's the closest point so look for the closest area you can trade with so it'll use the least number of convoys possible if we were trading with uh, America it would cost use 16 convoys and it would be there, there'd be more chance of of damage or being attacked especially later when we yeah uh, when we battle against uh, the Americans so that's something to to bear in mind so think about that with any production you're doing. Then we come to the construction side. The I'm put, putting in extra um, civilian factories in uh, Kaha, which is one of our um, puppets, just up here. So I'm putting in a factory here, which will help us to. They're, they're going to be trying to get independent by building things in their country. Your supplying them supporting them and preventing them or helping them not to want to become independent because you're so good for their country so good for their economy whereas if they send troops to battle for you it goes the other way they're doing things for you and it goes the other way and they want independence for doing doing a good job so that's one uh, set of production then uh, kirin down here in uh, manchuku two factories going in here to balance out the production of um, of their units and we'll have a look at their units in a moment then we're getting additional ports uh, down here in Palau 
this is going to be a main hub for offensive actions in the region. So down here is going to be one of the forward points until we take these areas and until we move on to, uh, to Singapore and Hong Kong up here. Then East Habi improving the port down here to allow us to get the supplies in for the troops while we move forward and we're going to need to increase the the road as well so that's going to be coming in after that so we'll get that that all sorted then we look at the recruitment side so you saw we'd allocated the troops but now you look down you can see the cavalry brigade with this symbol oh my picture's probably over it with the symbol over here and you can see let's edit that and you can see that it's uh, one of the uh, Manchuku troops six units so it's quite quite a large unit that they it's their manpower or it's 70% their manpower 30% yours so you gain that way by using their manpower but you have to use all of the equipment you support the you supply the equipment to allow it all to work and the same these units these have only got four in and what you're noticing like here this should be a th there we go three unit cavalry combat width of six the units up here combat width is the important 12 combat width so you see that um, the 12 then the mixed infantry this unit is six as well working our way through 12 width this unit 12 and as we work our way through is that the one we will have additional units let's find the right one that's a 12 that's an eight so you can see that the eight and eight and the, the two uh, eight and the twelve give you 20 units of combat width to to work with a, a standard general but the 12 and a 10 will give you 22 to work with a field marshal now you're thinking gaming bear what do you mean right I've said it before what this is so we can see, for instance, here, Field Marshal here. Let's have a look up oh, down here. There he is. He's got Offensive Doctrine. The combat width is reduced by 10%. But what that also means, you can up the frontage and it's still come under the 20 points, or basically the, the equivalent of 22 points under his command is worth... The standard width of 20 basically you get you get more troops in the same area so they've got more offensive power against your enemies that that's it in a nutshell and so by having different group sizes with different numbers of men it can allow you to mix and match get the right numbers in to work the front properly and to get the the, the highest amount of force in against your enemy also the supply side of it you can see the this unit uses 0.88 supply okay that sounds like a lot then we look at the cavalry 0.72 so different amounts of supplies for each of these units this unit 0.42 and then as you're looking through each of these units like this unit here 0.28 so different supply units different supply amounts 0.36 so you can see that the working with the logistics the terrain matters points wise as to how much you can supply your troops by mixing and matching and having a large amount of options for troops that you can send in because you can get to a point where you might have a 20 point unit but the region that's in front of you can only support 12 units 12 points of, uh, of units so Instead, the 20 can't move, but a 12-point unit can move straight in, have their firepower, and then push on, or hold the area. So by having different um, frontages of forces, as well as different supply costs of forces, you allow yourself to have more flexibility, and to, especially in these zones, 
where supplies are a dwindling and are always an issue you can move through areas that your enemy can only dream of or you can move forces in that your enemy will bounce on because your your points cost for what you have in the area is stronger has more frontage is 10 percent more powerful and so you'll be able to bounce the enemy move forward or defend a point so it gives you tactical advantages and that's why it's done that way and so the first reason is going in against the Dutch East Indies so we'll get this underway so that I wanted to explain all that to you before I kick this off so there we are let's we're heading in oh the say and I'm moving ships in let's have a look at the the naval side and I'm moving different ships in to cover these regions to allow us to get these invasions underway and we've got ships moving down here you can see the the carriers moving into place and they're not moving to different zones they're just staying on point holding positions and I'll show you how you can do that by going down to the naval side where you can either click on the unit and go on to, to the hold order which will allow them just to stay in position and hold hold the area and allow them to to bring their guns to bear like here shore bombardment 3.4 so that adds additional points to any invasion in the the region that they're on the coast of the same here this group destroyers and this uh, this carrier you've got the carriers here but they can't do anything but the, the planes on board can so you can fly the planes in from this zone in to assist and or the likes of down here battleships battleships ten and a half points of uh, shore bombardment to assist with the landings coming in so that's that's what you can do in the background and that's that's how it all fits so we'll keep this uh, rocking and rolling and I just need to organize some air power so I'm going to pause this I'll sort out some air power in different regions and a similar thing watching watching where you need the air power moving the air power bef between the different zones so highlighting this you can see where the air power well, we've got nothing in the regions at the moment a little bit here but they're not operational so we can send these to where they're needed and to assist us in the uh, in the attacks so let's keep this rocking and rolling and we'll wait for the because we can't do anything until we've got the uh, the su supplies in place these units are being produced and getting ready they've got they take a certain amount of time to produce so normally between 90 and 120 days to produce any units normal units are about 90 some of the quicker ones might be 60 or cavalry a general generally about 120 days so you need to have enough troops incoming because China is one of the places where you need a lot of troops to cover the frontage and they can't be very good because the supplies are bad otherwise they'll just sit there and not doing anything so these guys are all moving into position ready to rock and roll and let's look at the air situation so that they're moving into place we have the units over here as you can see to allocate them to where you want them you need to tick the box to allocate them to what they want to do air superiority close assault interception naval strikes or port attack and you can see the range of the types of ships uh, ships the type of planes that are going in that could attack the ships here with the close assault uh, planes going in attacking ships with these fighters up above giving air superiority and what we could load is naval bombers so you highlight the naval bomber click OK and then that'll move it in and th this is just a, a demonstration so highlight it then click naval strike and put it in the area you want it to go now looking into the area you can see that we don't have uh, this will change and we'll have one one plane there when it's necessary but it's bad I'm just gonna pause that air detect it's storms chance of accidents 30 percent 
so I'm going to actually stop him from deploying because it's too dangerous. So at the moment, the weather, I don't want him to flying around and uh, getting damaged and us losing the plane at this stage. So that's something you've got to watch out for. Um, night flying or storms are dangerous and it can impede your carriers. So that's something you need to, to bear in mind while you're tackling everything in the background. Oh, and something I hadn't shown is the uh, what I'm researching. So I'm researching interwar artillery. I know that sounds strange, but as I'm producing a large amount of artillery... Come on. That's it. Okay. Artillery... Got 107 units. These will be allocated to the troops. And by having the additional 10% for the support attack, it'll allow us to to go through the, uh, the front line of the enemy like a hot knife through butter. It'll give us a 10% advantage and help with that side of things. And then we have electronic engineering, which opens up to radios and mechanical computing, two branches which are very, very vital. Above that, or next to that, we have a production for basic machine tools to increase the amount of production we've got going through. The last one is construction one, which allows us to build factories more quickly. So that's what... That's basically everything that's going on in the background. And that's that's just an idea of how it looks. Now, let's check to make sure we've got the... That's So, eight units of the 16 are delivered. So, this eight... So, we're still eight units short. But it's ticking through very neatly. So, we just, just sit back. You wait. These... And, oh, what I've done... You can see these plans. You highlight the uh, the unit then to set up a front line you click on the front line icon and then drag it with a, the but, uh, right mouse button across the area you want or else you just click with the left mouse button and it'll fill up the whole of the front or else you can drag to a portion like here I've just got this um, army 3 just covering this section this part of the, in these mountains to the, uh, the the left of the uh, of the river, so that's where they are. And then to set up the front line, you click offensive line at, of, to set up a line like this, or you go for spearhead to set an offensive attacking line. And then the force just basically charges in that direction, exactly where you tell them to go, to give you options. So that's uh, that's what's happening there. If you have any questions, just put them in the uh, the comments, and I'll happily uh, answer. So that's that set up. Oh, and the these units which are out, uh, the carriers, that you highlight these buttons so that they can actually engage people when the time comes. And I, I set this for normal operations. So they'll operate when there's 25% or more units. And then I click the air wings to follow the carrier when they go out of zones to make sure that uh, there's, they've always got cover. Here, that's highlighted, so then we oop, click these to make sure they can operate. That's it. Setting it red, and at the moment they've only got uh, fighters and close air support. Naval bombers, well, we can put on 15, so click here, and I'm going to bump it up to 10 at the moment. Oh, that that'll do. Go with that for the moment, and uh, that'll help move the uh, the bombers into uh, to do their thing when when it's necessary. From here, what have we got produced? Nothing at the moment. So I'm gonna leave leave that, and then we just keep waiting for the production to kick in, things to happen in the background, and the time to go the 70 days for everything to be in place. We're still waiting for the oil to be delivered, so you just let this uh, keep keep ticking through. You've got the uh, the plans in place. You can click the navy button, which is the anchor, and have a look at the the zones. Now, for some reason, these units aren't. They don't seem to be on station. They're not doing anything here. So, I'm just going to get them to patrol this zone. That's that covered. So, then, 
Nope, let's just leave that patrolling. So they're then going to do, do their thing in the zone. And you can see the troops here that we're going to have to uh, to battle to be able to uh, to take the uh, the Dutch East Indies and take this small area. So the invasion plans are coming into uh, into position. What we have down here are, are destroyers, light cruisers, getting ready to uh, to take them out. So click skill to uh, to have a look at the the best unit that um, the, the best admiral that you have available superior tactician retreat decision and we'll go for uh, let's put a level four in that's okay admiral koga get him in and this is going to be a vital zone as well so we'll put um, yamamoto in here and also and down here let's go for uh, Admiral Oz Ozawa, uh, Ozawa, get him into that section, and with these ships, get him into there. So you can see the sort of thing that we're doing, and this this area, we've got a whole load of subs covering these areas. This zone, let's double check what's patrolling here so number of type 1 subs so to split it click this here and I'm going to select the second force and get them patrolling Gulf of Thailand and the Straits to help us to uh, to get the troops through now these guys they're not they're not hold, they're not doing anything on station so i'm just getting them to cover here and here and these units i'm actually going to move onto station in this area with the carrier and we'll put uh, this oh spanish civil war now uh we could send troops in which would be useful to improve the experience you've got of the um, of, of battle but by the time I send the troops down there to to Spain our first battles will st start to kick off and as soon as you're in a war they send your troops home so because we're going to be going to war so early there's no point in doing it if you're not going to go to war early then there is it's, it's as simple as that so uh, We'll just let this uh, keep rocking and rolling. Let's see how long until this is done. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking 11 days. By the time those forces arrived, well, we've got that that to go, the Soviet border incident, and then we've got the sudden expansion, which will be another 70 days. But it's not long. Two, basically two, two to three months, and that'll be, yeah, that'll be sorted. At the same time, we're building all of these uh, this equipment in the background to go with the troops, and the troops are moving in, into these units as as time's just ticking by. So that's where we are, and I'm speed put that up to uh, speed five. That's it. We've got uh, that reinforced the Soviet border, southern expansion as the next next section. So get that. Uh, let's have a look. Russians and Mongols, lapdogs have detected the build-up of our troops. Uh, not really. With the raid across the border before our preparations have been completed, our forces were badly mauled in the in, uh, intense skirmish that followed before the two sides disengaged. Oh no! Yeah, exactly. So, we're on our way to war. Our troops are preparing. We'll have a look at the production, the recruitment these guys are all are starting to get ready now let's have a look at the deployment more equipment is needed so some of this better these better units let's get these guys in so we'll go for the, uh, the these really good units first as the as the top-notch units 
and working our way up the settings are reinforcements and upgrades are less important so that will then as we follow this we can then see how the equipment is now going to these units rather than going in the background it would have been going to the the frontline troops to reinforce them now it's going to those troops who are being produced ready to help us prepare for the battle so that's what's going on so keeping this rocking and rolling the planes are being produced everything is being produced and there we go we've got the engineering now radios will help us the mechanical computing will increase our research uh, will decrease the research time but the radio is very yeah, very important and will increase allow our troops to have uh, radios which will help them in the battlefield to reinforce so i'm going for the radios first and we'll look at the other the other issues uh, we'll put the other computing side of things in uh, at a later date so keep this rocking and rolling these units are going to be building up and we'll just have a, have a look and see what's happening anything else happening in the world follow over nothing happening in Poland we've got these battles here it would be nice to be going in there but really by the time our troops got there it'd be time to come home so they'd just be a bit seasick for no reason and we're watching these zones these guys are moving into place preparing getting ready and I'm going to highlight here and look for some Let's put 10 interwar fighters in to get them ready to uh, to assist when the time is right. And then from here, these units, uh, 50 close air support, I'm going to move them all straight over, get them in here to assist in, uh, in northern China and normal operations. That's it. So that's, that's going to help us to take the other uh, zone to control it so that just get everything in place build up the numbers build up the units there we go southern expansion this is what we've been waiting for so we now want spiritual mobilization imperial austerity and then industrial effort so highlight that to get it out of the way and these troops are moving in and we are ready it's May 1936 and we can we can just declare war and I want to let's go in quick boom oh let's cancel that sorry this should have given us a war goal against the Netherlands. So uh, we'll wait for these guys to be called in. So I'm going to pause this and we will have a look at that at the beginning of the next episode. That's going to kick in very, very soon. These units are ready to rock and roll. The plans are in place. And the units, these guys are all in position we can look at the uh, the plans highlighting here these guys are all going to be ready to uh, to go in and assault as soon as they're called into the war so actually let's let's actually declare on them declare war I'm not going to call the allies There we go, that's that underway, and they're going to call their allies in to the war. So, we'll let that happen, and let's see if these guys are in. That's it. We are at war, and now we can attack. I just need to reallocate. Something's gone wrong with the allocation. I just need to re 
reorganize it. I think they just need to re... That's it. Estimated plan value 60%. These guys are going to be moving into place to capture the different zones. So as soon as they're ready, I'm just uh, speed this up so we can see what's happening. They should all be allocating as soon as they're ready. Now why... Click to activate the entire plan. I don't know why it's not working. Select all. Why aren't these guys going in? That's, I'm going to have to work out what's happening. I'm sorry about this, guys. So I'm going to pause and we will have a look at this at the beginning of the next episode. So they want to send a unit. No, we're fine. Thank you for asking. And I will... will that's a good point to leave it, and I will find out what's happened. So I'm going to save this, and we'll have a look. I don't quite know what ha what what's gone wrong. So, see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye.